This is it. Last camp battle. And today being July 5th means we have 22 days until training camp. What is up, Finn fans? Yes. The last training camp battle video. I don't know what in me saying that something happened to my voice. To, I don't even know. Yes, this is the, the last one. Um, no, I will not be talking about punters. I will not be talking about kickers because there is no competition. There's no battle. There's there's nothing. There's nothing. It's Sanders and the new kicker we brought in who we'll see how that pans out. Um, but yes, we're going to be talking about safeties today. Then I'm going to get to your comment of the day. And this one might be a short one. Unless the comment of the day is a really good one. Um, because there's not that many safeties on the team. So let's just jump into this without me rambling on anymore like I usually do. So we're going to be a pop up the safeties. Again, there is six legit safeties. And then there's Jason McCourty, who's listed as a DB. So let's jump into this. We got Brian Cole, who signed to the practice squad on September 7th last year. And he signed a future contract. That's it. That's all you get from Brian Cole. Then we have Clayton Fedulum, who was a free agent signing last year. Um, he had that very awesome fake punt where he like rolled out and took it up the field. Um, he's essentially a special teamer, right? If you look at his stats, he really didn't do much when it came to giving up yardage, giving up receptions, any of that stuff. He is mostly just a special teamer. Will he stay on the team as just a special teamer? I will talk about that when I go through them all. Then we have Nate Holly, who we signed last August um, from the Canadian Football League. Now, he played linebacker on the Canadian Football League, but we signed him and he transitioned to safety. So he's still on the team, uh, and we'll see how that all pans out. Then we have Brandon Jones, who was a third-round pick last year. Um, when it came to coverage, he didn't do very well last year. I'm just going to say that. Uh, 28 targets, gave up 23 receptions for an 82.1 uh, reception percentage and he gave up 202 yards so it wasn't big plays it wasn't big chunk plays it was more like dink and dunk crossing routes all that stuff but again it was his rookie year I'm gonna give him all of the rookies that kind of struggled last year and I'm not even just talking on the Dolphins I'm talking in the NFL in general I'm giving them somewhat of a pass all right you can we'll see what you do with the full offseason all that stuff all of the rookies so if you're like, hey, this first round pick sucked last year, we'll see how he does this year. Even like the tackle for the Giants. It was horrible last year. Let's see how he does this year. Let's just wait to make our decision. Um, then we have Eric Rowe, who was a 2019 free agent signing. Played corner with the New England pa Patriots. Couldn't even get that out. Made me nauseous. Um, transitioned him to safety. And uh, got a contract extension because he played well at safety. He allowed 63.5% receptions. Uh, he was targeted 74 times. Allowed 47 receptions. A little bit of a dyslexic flip on that one. Um, he had a bad game against Waller. And he had a bad game against Kelsey. But other than that, he's pretty sound at shutting down tight ends. Now, this year, we're playing the Raiders again. So he can get that revenge game. So we'll see how that all pans out. Um, but if you go back and watch that Raiders game, he wasn't out of position. It just so happened that Waller is just a giant man and jumped over him every time because he was in position every time he made those catches. So that is Eric Rowe. Then we have Javon Holland, who is a 2021 second round pick. Uh, one of my favorite picks in this past draft. Um, he's like the Swiss Army knife of safeties. He was the first safety taken in the draft. A lot of people, it was either him or the other top-notch safety. My brain isn't working right now. Um, so I can't tell you who that is, but you will in the comment section. Um, I'm very happy with this pick, and we'll see what he could do. I'm hearing he is doing fantastic so far in OTAs and in minicamp. So we will see how that all pans out. But I have high hopes for him, which I try not to do because you all know I'd rather be surprised than let down. And if you have high hopes, you tend to fall on your face when it doesn't work out. And then, like I said, we have uh, Jason McCourty, who is listed as a defensive back. He is not on the whatever side I put the graphic. He's not on there. Um but he's listed as defensive back, so Jason McCourty could be that Eric Rowe-type player. 
where he's you know played corner for most of his career, and we're going to throw him into the safety situation because we have seven safeties now, if you're including Jason McCourty. So when it comes to who's going to make the team and who's really battling to make the team or who's battling to start, Eric Rowe is going to be one of the starting safeties. It is what it is. Um, if you think he sucks and he can't cover tight ends, well, then you're probably disappointed. But Eric Rowe is going to be one of the starting safeties. And then it's who's going to be the starting safety opposite Eric Rowe. I'm hearing Javon Holland. I'm hearing he's doing, like I said, fantastic. But again, it's OTAs and it's minicamp. Once training camp comes, and especially, you know, we got the Chicago Bears and the Atlanta Falcons during practice, then you can really see how that all pans out. But I'm hearing it's Javon Holland, Eric Rose are starting safeties. Then you have, well, who's going to make the team? You have Brian Cole, Clayton Fedulum, Nate Holly, um, Brandon Jones is going to make the team. And so is J- uh, Jason McCourty. So Brandon Jones, he's probably, he might be that roamer or vice versa, but. With Brandon Jones having a hard time, again, it was limited yardage, but it was 82% receptions. I don't know if they would put him back there at safety. Um, Again, they could have Javon Holland playing multiple positions. That's the thing about our secondary. It's an amalgamation of different things. You're going to play here. You're going to be here. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. You're going to do... You all know how I feel about that, and I love it. And you all know how I feel about that one player who didn't love it. He's not on the team anymore. Um, so when it comes to who's not going to make the team, it's going to be, I, I don't see many of them not making the team like Clayton Fedulum. Like I said, he, he's a special teamer kind of like Mac Collins. He, Mac Collins was a special teamer. It just so happened. He got thrusted into the starting position because our, our wide receivers got completely demolished by it towards the last five, six games of the season. So Clayton Fedulum, I think, is a special teamer. I think he'll make the team as a special teamer. Brian Cole, I think he'll go back to the practice squad. Same thing with Nate Holly, who seems like a project. You know, we bring him up from the Canadian Football League as a linebacker. We're trying to turn him safety. Um, I don't really see anyone on on the safety position not making the team. Um, I think all seven make the team. Like I said, Jason McCourty is going to be that back and forth guy Javon Holland's making the team he's probably starting Eric Rose the starter Brandon Jones again so when it comes to the battle I think for now the battle with these safeties is who's going to start opposite Eric Rowe that's what I see with the safeties um but we got seven of them some of them are going to be on the practice squad like I said Fledulum is going Fedulum is going to be on a special teams and then you have Brandon Jones Eric Rowe Javon Holland Jason McCourty just moving around in the backfield. So, well, not backfield. The backfield for the defense. If that makes any sense to you. But be sure to comment below. What do you think about the safety position? Do you like our safeties? I love our safeties. I think Javon Holland mixed with um, uh, Eric Rowe is going to be dynamic and, and ridiculously good back there. But be sure to comment below. Do you agree with me that I think they're all going to make it? It's just going to be where they're going to be placed, whether it's practice squad, special teams, or on the field. Um and if not, let me know who, who's going and who's staying. I'm going to get to one of your guys' comments of the day. And this comment, I went on Twitter. And I was like, hey, I'm making a video. Get at me real quick. And this comes from Jahir. I hope I said your name right. And he says, all Xavier and Howard talk aside. Thank you. Because that's all that is being talked about right now. Because there's nothing else to talk about. And I'm trying to not talk about that so i appreciate your comment what are the chances we sign up gizicki before he lands in the free agent market he's not one of the popular tight ends but he's sure talented would you sign him before the season starts in case he's an explosion year or hope his stats dive a bit very good question that's why i picked it also thank you so much for not making an xavian howard question because i feel like i've answered as much of xavian howard as i can with the information i have which is minimum Will he get traded? I don't know. Will the Dolphins resign him? I don't know. How much do you think you can get for him? Made a video about that. Do you think he will get signed? Made a video about that. There, I there's no much. There's I can't talk about Xavier Howard anymore. I literally talked about it too. Like I have an Xavier Howard box over here with information in it. It's empty. I got nothing else to talk about. So again, thank you. And Mike Zicky. If I'm the Dolphins and I think that Mike Gesicki is the future and we need to, you know, have him help Tua and we love his talent. 
Now, he has a limited talent. He has a limited talent base. He's not great at blocking. Is he bad at blocking? No, he got better from when we picked him up, when we drafted him. But is he a guy that we're going to put in on third down in line to help us block to get that first? Or is he the guy who in I formation, he's going to be the tight end out there in line to help us block, to break off a big run, to secure the win? You know, probably not. We're probably going to put Durham Smythe out there. We're probably going to put Long out there. We're probably going to put Shaheen out there. It's probably not going to be Gazicki. So he's more of a pass catching Jimmy Graham type tight end, which isn't a bad thing, but it does limit when we can use him. Now, is he getting better at blocking? Will we see him do better at blocking this year? Will he do more in line to help us disguise our plays? We'll see. But, you know, I would sign him now if the Dolphins think. I would, I'm would. i not one for waiting till the end of the season. We all know what happens when you wait till the end of the season. So I'm all for sign them before the end of the season, whether it's now, whether it's you know mid-season, whatever. Because we've seen them give extensions to mid-season. Um, players so I'm not you wait till the end of the season and he has a big year then you're gonna lose him if you want him now drafting long do they want him still or is it an insurance for him to have a big year and demand 11 12 million a year contract and the Dolphins just say all right goodbye goodbye so it's a good question. It's a very good question. You know, he said he's not one of the popular tight ends. I would disagree with that part, though. I, I feel like he is one of the popular tight ends. You know, you go around and you ask, you know, fans of other teams, hey, name some Dolphins. They're going to throw Gazicki out there um, because he's been talked about a lot. And he, he puts it out there. He's the top, I would say, top 10, top 6 tight end in the NFL. Um, but when it comes to re-signing him, it all depends on what the Dolphins think of him and what the Dolphins plan with him. Because again, that Holland, that um, long draft pick, put a big question mark on Mike Gazicki's, um contract extension. Well, do they need to now? Because Long is the type of tight end I want it now. Again, I love Mike Gazicki, and I'll, I can say that a thousand times. But he that Long is the type of tight end I wanted the Dolphins to draft when we took Gazicki. Now, when we took Gazicki, I was excited because he's dynamic. He can catch. Anything in his radius, but he's a one-dimensional type tight end. I want that legit traditional Waller, Kelsey, you know, Kittle tight end where they can block as well as really good at um, route running and catching. You know, I wanted the go dirt. I wanted those types of tight ends. We got Gazicki. I'm not upset with getting Gazicki, but. When they pick up Long, Long seems to be that type of tight end where he can find the space, he's very good at blocking, and he could do kind of it all. So that puts, like I said, a big question mark on, well, what's going to happen with Gazicki? So, again, if I'm the Dolphins and I like him, I want him to be the future. I want to match him up with Long and have Long be the replacement for Smythe. Then I'm signing him now. I'm signing him before the season ends because, like you said, would you sign him before the season starts in case he has an explosive year? Yes. They did that with Jarvis Landry. They waited and they waited and they waited and they waited. And then all of a sudden he had a, he's been he put together multiple hundred reception yard you know, hundred reception years and he he was very good. And all of a sudden he, I want fifteen million instead of the twelve you could have gave me at the beginning of the season. Well, then we're not going to give you fifteen million because my name is Mike Tannenbaum and Adam Gase and I'm. Two big dummies. So we're going to tag in and trade you to the Cleveland Browns. Broke my heart. It's one of the first videos I made on this channel. So, yes, I will re-sign him before the season starts, and I will do it before the season ends. Hope that answers your question. Thank you so much, Jaheer. I hope that I said your name right for the comment, and thank you so much for not asking me about Xavier Howard. Like I said, there's only so many times I can answer the same question over and over again. I appreciate it, but it is that time of the year, though, that it's now it's you don't really hear anything. Like even if you go on NFL Network, it's old games. They're like not even there's nothing to talk about. But your boy here has got videos for you. So don't don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Hit those thumbs up if you like this content. I got a ton of people to tell you to check out. Be sure to check them out. First and foremost, Backroom Collections. 
fantastic artwork. Use the promo code DDW. You get yourself 10% off. Like I said, <clears throat> I got my Ricky one hanging up. I gave my father the Jason Taylor one for Father's Day. He absolutely loved it. Check them out. Also, if you want some more discounts and some more good stuff, if you like this patch, I have t-shirts, pins, the cup is over there. Patch Vibes. Use the promo code DW yourself 20% off. And also, don't forget to check out Miami Sports Music. Great collection of YouTubers, podcasters, all that great stuff. They have a YouTube channel and a website. Check it out. But other than that, guys, I'll see you Wednesday unless news breaks. You know when news breaks, I will be sure to give you the news. But I'll see you guys Wednesday in the next video. But like usual, stay classy. Hope you guys had a fantastic fourth. Everything's up. <laughs>